Good day. I am RG De Elisan Mulandog and I will discuss the telecommunications, the internet, and wireless technology in management information system. Learning objectives. In this video, you will learn what are the principal components of telecommunications, networks, and key networking technologies? What are the different types of networks? How do the internet and internet technology work? And how do they support, support communications and e-business? And what are the principal technologies and standards for wireless networking communications and internet access? Two de France wins with wireless technology every July. About 200 cyclists are raced across 2,200 miles of the most difficult terrain in France, including steep roads in the Pyrenees and Alps. So the Tour de France is considered the world's greatest bicycle race. The first Tour de France took place in 1903 as a way of promoting sales of El Auto newspapers and initially attracting mostly local competitors and spectators. Thanks to newspapers, radio, television, uh, coverage and prestige of the event expanded. As with the other com uh, compete, uh, competitive sports such as football, baseball, tennis and soccer, today's two different fans don't just want to just watch a sport they want to engage with it and they expect more information interaction data enhanced viewing live streaming video on demand mobile apps and social media interaction digital technology has become essential for attracting fans athletes sponsors and broadcasters the experience of the two different illustrates some of the powerful capabilities and opportunities for provided by contemporary networking technology. The annual Tour de France bicycle race now uses wireless networking and wireless sensor technology to closely track cyclist speeds and position in relation to other variables affecting race outcome and to deliver race information in instantaneously to fans and broadcasters. The Tour de France is thus able to provide real-time race statistics rider profiles, predictions about race outcomes and content for TV broadcast and social media, increasing the popularity of the sports and fans' interests. Two different cyclists and teams can use this information to improve their performance. So what are the principal components of telecommunication networks and key networking technologies? If you run or work in a business, you can do it without networks. You need to communicate rapidly with your customers, suppliers, and employees. Until about 1990, businesses used the postal system or telephone system with voice or fax for communication. Today, however, you and your employees use computers, email, text messaging, the internet, mobile phones, and mobile computer connected to wireless networks for, for this purpose. Networking and the internet are now nearly synonymous with doing business. So networking and communication trends. So firms in the past used two fundamental uh, different types of networks, such as telephone networks and computer networks. So telephone networks historically handled voice communication and computer networks handled data traffic. And telephone companies build telephone networks throughout the 20th century by using voice transmission technologies. And these companies almost always operate as regulated monopolies throughout the world. Computer companies originally built computer networks to transmit data between computers in different locations. Thanks to continuing telecommunications, the regularization and information technology innovation, telephone and computer networks are converging into a single digital network using shared internet-based standards and technology. So telecommunications providers today, such as AT&T and Verizon, offer data transmission, internet access, mobile phone service, and television programming, as well as voice service. Cable companies such as Cablevision and Comcast offer voice service and internet access. 
Computer networks have expanded to include internet, telephone, and video service. So what is computer network? Um, if you had to connect the computer for two or more employees in the same office, you would need a computer network. In its simplest form, a network consists of two or more connected computers. So a computer network is a set of computer sharing resources located on or provided by network nodes. The computer uses common communication protocols over digital interconnections to communicate with each other. Each computer on the network contains a network interface device to link the computer to the network. The connection medium for linking network components can be a telephone wire, coaxial cable, or radio signal in, in the case of cell phone and wireless local area networks or Wi-Fi networks. So the Network Operating System or NOS routes and manage communications on the network and coordinate coordinates networks resources. It can reside on every computer in the network on primary, primarily on a dedicated server computer for all the applications on the network. A server is a computer on a network that, that performs important um, network functions for client computers, just, such as displaying web pages, storing data, and storing the network operating system. Uh, Microsoft Windows servers and Linux are the most widely used network operating system. So most networks also contains a switch or hub or a hub acting as a connection point between the computers. Hubs are simply de a simple device that connect network components, sending pack packet of data to all other connected device. A switch has more intelligence than a hub and can uh, filter and forward data to a specific destination on the network. Uh, what if you want to communicate with another network, such as the internet? You would need a router. A router is a communications processor that routes package, packets of data through different networks, ensuring that the data sent gets to the correct address. Network switches and routers have proprietary software built into their hardware for directing the movements of data on the network. This can create network bottlenecks and make the process of configuring a network more complicated and time-consuming. So network in large companies. The network we've des described might suitable for a small business, but what about large companies with many locations and thousands of employees? As a firm grows, its small networks can be tied together into a corporate wide networking infrastructure. The network inf infrastructure for a large corporation consists of a, a large number of these small local area, area networks linked to another local area network and to firm wide corp corporate networks. A number of powerful servers supports a corporate website, a corporate intranet, and perhaps an extranet. Some of these servers link to other large computer supporting backend systems. As you can see from this figure, a large corporate network infrastructure uses a wide variety of technologies. So everything from ordinary telephone service and corporate data networks to internet service, wireless internet, and mobile phones. One of the major problems facing corporations today is, is how to integrate all the different communication networks and and channels into a coherent system that enables information to flow from one part of the corporation to another and from one system to another. So key digital networking technologies. Contemporary digital network and the internet are based on three technologies, um, which is client server computing. So the client uh, server computing uh, use of packet switching and the development of widely used communication standards, uh, most important of which is transmission control protocol, internet protocol or TCP or IP for linking desperate networks and computers. So it, it, it is a distributed computer model in which some of the processing power is located within small and expensive client computers and resides literally on desktops or laptops or in a handle device. So these powerful clients are linked to uh, one another through a network that is controlled by a network server computer. The server 
sets the rules of communication for the networks and provides every client with an ad address so others can find it on the network. Client or server computing has large, largely replaced centralized mainframe computing in which nearly all the processing takes place on a central large mainframe computer. So client ser or server computing has extended computing to departments, work groups, factory floors, and other parts of the business that could not be served by a centralized architecture. It also makes it possible for personal computing devices such as PCs, laptops, and mobile phones to be connected to the network, such as the internet. The internet is the largest implementation of client or server computing. So packet switching is a method of slicing digital messages into parcel called packets, sending the packets along different communication paths as they become available and then reassembling the packets once they arrive at their destinations. Prior to the development of packet switching, computer networks used least dedicated telephone circuits to communicate with other computers in remote locations. In circuit switch networks, such as the telephone system, a complete point-to-point -point circuit is assembled and then communication can proceed. These dedicated circuit switching techniques were expensive and wasted available communications capacity. The circuit was maintained regardless of whether any data were being sent. Packet switching is more efficient Messages are first broken down into small fixed bundles of data called packets. The packets includes information for directing the packets to the right address and for checking transmission errors along the, with the data. The packets are transmitted over various communication channels by using routers, each packet traveling independently. Packets of data originally at one source will be routed through many paths and networks before being reassembled into the or original message when they reach their destinations. So TCP and IP and connectivity. In a typical telecommunication network, diverse hardware and software components need to work together to transmit information. Different components in a network communicate with each other by adhering to a common set of rules called protocols. A protocol is a set of rules and procedures governing transmissions of information between two points in a network. In the past, diverse propriety and incompatible protocols often forced business firms to purchase computer and communications equipment from a single vendor. However, today, corporate networks are increasingly using a single common worldwide standard called Transmission Control Protocol or Internet Protocol or TCP or IP. So TCP and IP use a, a suite of protocols, uh, the main one being TCP and IP. TCP refers to the transmission control protocol, which handles the movement of data between computers. TCP established a connection between the computers, sequences the transfer of packets, and acknowledges the, pack, the packet sends. IP refers to the internet protocol, which is responsible for the delivery of packets and includes the disassembling and reassembling of packets during transmission. So what are the different types of networks? There are two ways to communicate a message in a network. An analog signal is represented by a continuous waveform that passes through a communication medium and has been used for audio communication. The most common analog devices are the telephone handset, the speaker on your computer, or your iPhone earphone, all of which create analog waveforms that your ear can hear. So a digital signal is a discrete binary waveform rather than a continuous waveform. So a digital signal communicates information as strings of two discrete states, 1 bits and 0 bits which are represented as on-off electrical pulses. Computers use digital signals and require a modem to convert these digital signals into analog signals that can be sent over uh, telephone lines, cable lines, or wireless medi uh, media that use analog signals. Mo uh, modem stands for modular demodulator. Cable modems connect your computer to the internet by using a cable network. DSL modems connect your computer to the internet using a telephone company's landline network. 
and wireless modems performs the same function as traditional modems, connecting your computer to a wireless network that could be a cell phone network or a Wi-Fi network. So types of network. There are many kinds of networks and ways of classifying them. One of way one way of looking at networks is in terms of their geographic scope. So for local area, uh, area network, if you work in a business that uses networking, you are probably connecting to other employees and groups via a local area network. So a local area network or LAN is designed to connect personal computers and other digital devices within a half mile or 500 meters radius. LANs typically connected, uh, connecting a few computers in a small office and the computers in one building or all the computers in several buildings in close proximity. LANs also are used to link to long distance wide area networks. Um, and other networks around the world using the internet. So for metropolitan and wide area networks, wide area networks or WANs span a broad geographical distance or regions, uh, states, continents, or the entire globe. The most universal and powerful one is the internet. Computers connect to a WAN through public networks, such as the telephone system or private cable systems, or through leased lines or satellites. A metropolitan area network, MAN, is a network that spans a metropolitan area, usually a city and its major suburbs. Its geographic scope falls between a one and a LAN. So transmission media and transmission speed. So network use different kinds of physical transmission media, including twisted pair, uh, pair wire, media for wireless transmission, coaxial cable, fiber optic cable. Uh, each has advantage and limitation, so a wide range of speeds is possible for any given medium, depending on the software and hardware configuration. So, uh, bandwidth transmission speed, the total amount of digital information that can be transmitted through a telecommunications medium is measured in bits per second. One sig signal change or cycle is required to transmit one or several bits. Therefore, the transmission capacity of each type of telecommunication medium is a function of its frequency. The number of cycles per second that can be sent through the medium is measured in hertz. So 1 hertz is equal to 1 cycle of the medium. The range of frequencies that can be accommodated on a particular telecommunications channel is called its bandwidth. The bandwidth is the difference between the highest and lowest frequencies that can be accommodated on a single channel. The greater the range of frequencies, the greater the bandwidth, and the greater the channel's transmission capacity. So how do, we, how do the internet and internet technology works, and how do they support communications and e-business? So the internet has become an indispensable personal and business tool, but what exactly is the internet? So how does it work? And what does internet technology have to offer for business? So let's look at the most important internet features. First, let's define what is internet. So the internet is a global computer network providing a variety of information and communication facilities consisting of interconnected networks using standardized communication protocols. So the internet is the world's most ex extensive public communication system. It's also the world's largest implementation of client or server computing and the internet working, linking millions of individuals' networks all over the world. So an internet service provider or ISP is a commercial organization with a permanent connection to the internet that sells temporary connections to retail subscribers. PLDT, Globe, and Sky Cable are some of the ISPs in the Philippines. Individuals also connect to the internet through their business firms, universities, or research centers that have this, a designated internet domains. So digital subscriber line technologies operates over existing telephone line to carry voice, data, and video at transmission rates ranges uh, ranging from 385 kbps all the way up to 3 mbps, depending on usage pattern and distance.
So cable internet connections, on the other hand, provided by cable television vendors use digital cable coaxial lines to deliver high-speed internet access to homes and businesses. They can provide high-speed access to the internet of up to 50 Mbps, although most providers offer a service ranging from 3 Mbps to 20 Mbps. Where DSL and, and cable services are unavailable, it is possible to access the internet uh, via satellite, although some satellite internet connections have slower upload speeds than other broadband services. So T1 and T3 lines are international telephone standards for digital communication. They are least dedicated lines suitable for business or government agencies requiring high-speed guaranteed service levels. T1 lines offers guaranteed delivery at 1.54 Mbps and T3 lines offer delivery at 45 Mbps. The internet does not provide similar guarantee service levels, but simply best effort. So internet addressing and architecture. So every device connected to the internet or another TCP or IP network is assigned a unique internet protocol, address consisting of a string of numbers. When a user sends a message to another user on the internet or another TCP or IP network, the message is first decomposed into packets. Each packet contains its designate desi destination address. The packets are then sent from the clients to the network server and from there onto as many other servers as necessary to arrive at a specific computer with a known address. At the destination address, the packets are reassembled into the or original message. So the domain name system. Because it would be incredibly difficult for internet users to remember long strings of numbers, an IP address can be represented by a natural language conver convention called a domain name. So the part of a network address that identifies it as belongs to a particular domain. So the next, um, the, dom the, the domain name system or DNS converts domain name to IP addresses. DNS servers maintain a database containing IP addresses mapped to their corresponding domain names. At the top of the DNS hierarchy is the root domain. The child domain of the root is called a top-level domain. And the child domain of the top-level domain is called the second-level domain. So top-level domains are two and three character names you are familiar with from surfing the web. For example, .com, .edu, .gov, and the various country include such as .ca, .ph. Second-level domains have two parts designating a top-level name and a second-level name such as by.com, nyu.edu, or amazon.ca. So a host name at the bottom of the hierarchy designates a specific computer on either the internet or a private network. So internet architecture and governance. So internet data traffic is carried over transcontinental high-speed backbone, networks that generally operates in the range of 115, 155 Mbps to 2.5 Gbps. These trunk lines are typically owned by a long-distance telephone companies called network service providers or by national governments. The internet backbone connects to region, uh, regional networks which in turn provide access to internet service providers, large firms, and government institutions. <clears throat> Network access points and metropolitan area exchanges are hubs where the backbone intersects regional and local net networks and where backbone owners connect with one another. So the future internet or IPv6 and internet 2. So the internet was not originally designed to handle billions of users and the transmission of massive quantities of data. Because of sheer internet population growth, the world is about to run out of, of available IP addresses using the old addressing convention. The old system based on 32-bit addresses is being replaced by a new version of IP addressing called IPv6 or Internet Protocol version 6. 
which contains 128-bit addresses or 2 to the power of 128 or more than a quadrillion possible unique addresses. IPv6 is compatible with most modems and routers sold today. And IPv6 will fall back to the old addressing system if IPv6 is not available on local networks. The transition to IPv6 will take several years as system replace older equipment. Internet 2 is an advanced networking consortium representing more than 500 U.S. universities, private businesses, and government agencies working with 94,000 in institutions across the United States and international networking partners from more than 100 countries. To connect these communities, Internet 2 developed a high-capacity 100 Gbps network that serves as a testbed for leading edge technologies that may eventually migrate to the public internet, including large-scale networks, performance, measurements, and management tools, secure identity and access management tools, and capabilities such as scheduling high bandwidth and high performance circuits. So internet service and communication tools. So the internet is based on client or server technology. Individuals using the internet control what they do through client applications on their computers, such as web browser softwares. The data, including email messages and web pages, are stored on servers. A client uses the internet to request information from a particular web ser server on a distant computer. And the server sends the requested information back to the client over the internet. Client platforms today include not only PCs and other computers, but also smartphones and tablets. So internet service, um, a client computer in connecting to the internet has access to a variety of services. These services include email, chatting, and instant messaging, electronic discussion groups, telnet, file transfer protocol, and the web. So each internet service is implemented by one or more software programs. All the services may run on a single server computer, or different services may be allocated to different machines. Email enables messages to be exchanged from computer to computer with cap cap capabilities for routing messages to multiple recipients, forwarding messages, and attaching text documents or multimedia files to messages. Most email today is sent through the internet. The cost of email is far lower than equivalent voice, postal, or overnight delivery cost, and email messages can arrive anywhere in the world in a matter of seconds. Chatting enables two or more people who are simultaneously connected to the internet to hold live, interactive conversation. Chat systems now supports voice and video chat as well as written conversation. Many online retail businesses offer chat services on their websites to attract visitors, to encourage repeat purchases, and to improve customer service. Instant messaging is a type of chat service that enables participants to create their own private chat channels. The instant messaging system alerts the user whenever someone on his or her private list is online so that the user can initiate a chat session with other individuals. Instant messaging system for consumers including Yahoo, Messenger, Google Hangouts, AOL Instant Messenger, and Facebook Messenger. So voice over IP is a technology that allows you to make voice calls using a broadband internet connection instead of a regular or analog phone line. The internet has also become a popular platform for voice transmission and corporate networking. Voice over IP or VoIP technology delivers voice information in digital forms using packet switching, avoiding the, the tolls charged by local and long distance cell phone networks. Calls that would ordinarily be transmitted over public telephone networks travels over the corporate network based on the internet protocol or over the public internet. Voice calls can be made and received with a computer equipped with a microphone and speakers or with a VOIP enabled telephone. So how voice over IP works. So a voice phone called digitalize and breaks up a voice message into data packets that may travel along different routes before being reassembled at the final destination. A processor nearest the call's destination called a gateway arranges the packets in the proper order and directs them to the telephone number of the receiver or the IP address of the receiving computer. 
So Unified Communications and Virtual Private Networks. In the past, each of the firm's networks for wired and wireless data, voice communications, and video conferencing operated independently of each other and had to be managed separately by the Information Systems Department. Now, however, firms can merge desperate communications modes into a single universally accessible service using unified communication technology. So unified communication Communications integrate desperate channels for voice communications, data communications, instant messaging, email, and electronic conferencing into a single experience by which users can seamlessly switch back and forth between different communication modes. Presence um, technology shows whether a person is available to receive a call. Virtual private networks. A virtual private network or B v uh, VPN is a secure encrypted private network that has been configured within a public network to take advantage of the economies of scale and management facilities of large networks such as the internet a vpn provides your firm with secure encrypted communications at the at a much lower cost than the same cap cap capabilities offered by traditional non-internet providers that use their private networks to secure communications VPNs also provide a network infrastructure for combining voice and data networks. Several competing uh, protocols are used to protect data transmitted over the public internet, including point-to-point -point tunneling protocols. In a process called tunneling, packets of data are encrypted, are wrapped inside IP packets. By adding this wrapper around a network message to hide its content, business firms create a private connections that travels through the public internet. The web. So the web is the most popular internet service. It's a system with universally accepted standards for storing, retrieving, formatting, and displaying information by using a client or server architecture. Web pages are formatted using hypertext, embedded links, and that connects documents to one another and that also links pages to other objects such as sound video or animation files when you click a graph graphic and a video clip plays you have clicked a hyperlink a typical website is a collection of web pages linked to a home page so hypertext web pages are based on a standard hypertext markup language or html which formats documents and incorporates dynamic links to other documents and other objects stored in the same or remote computers. Web pages are accessible through the internet because web browser software operates your computer can request web pages stored on an internet host server by using the hypertext transfer protocol or HTTP. HTTP is the communication standard that transfer pages on the web. For example, when you type a web address in your browser, such as http colon double forward slash www.sec.gov, your browser sends an HTTP request to the sec.gov server requesting the homepage of sec.gov. HTTP is the first of the letters at the start of every web address, followed by the domain name which specifies the organization server computer that is storing the web, uh, the web page. Most companies have a domain name that is in the same as closely related to their official corporate names. The directory path and web page name are two more pieces of information within the web addresses that helps the browser track down the requested page. So together, the address is called a uniform resource locator or url web servers a web server is software for locating and managing store stored web pages it locates the web pages a user requests on the computer where they are stored and delivers the web pages to the user's computer server applications usually run off dedicated computers although they can all reside on a single computer in a small organization so searching for information on the web so no one knows for sure how many web pages there really are 
Uh, the service web is the part of the web that search engines visits and about which information is recorded. Search engines, obviously, with so many web pages, finding specific ones that can help you or your business nearly instantly is an important problem. The question is, how can you find the one or two pages you really want and need out of billions of indexes web pages? Search engines attempt to solve the problem of finding useful information on the web nearly instant, instantly and arguably they are the killer app of the internet era. So how Google works. So the Google search engine is continuously crawling the web, indexing the context of each page, calculating its popularity and storing the pages so that it can respond quickly to users requests to see a page. The entire process takes about half a second. So mobile search, mobile search from smartphones and tablets make makes up more than 50% of all searches and will expand rapidly in the next few years. Google, Amazon, and Yahoo have developed new search interfaces to make searching and shopping from smartphones more convenient. So Google revised its search algorithm to favor sites that looks good on smartphone screens. Although smartphones are widely used to shops, Actual purchases uh, typically take place on laptops or desktops followed by tablets. Semantic search is another way for search engines to become more discriminant discriminating and helpful is to make search engines capable of understanding what we are really looking for. Called semantic search, the goal is to build a search engine that can really understand human language and behavior. Google and other search engines engine firms are attempting to refine search engines algorithms to capture more of what the users intended and the meaning of a search. Google has made predictive search part of, of most search results. This part of the search algorithm guesses what you are looking for and suggests search terms as you type your search words. Social search one problem with Google and mechanical search engines is that they are so thorough. Enter a search for ultra computers and in 0.2 seconds, you will receive over 300 million responses. Social search is an effort to provide fewer, more relevant and trustworthy search results based on a person's network and social contacts. In contrast to the top search engines that use a mathematical algorithm, to find pages that satisfy your query. Social search would highlight content that was created or touched by members of your social network. Facebook search is a social network search engine that responds, that, that responds to user search queries with information from the user's social network of, of friends and connections. So Facebook search relies on the huge amount of data on Facebook that is, or can be linked to individual and organizations. You might use Facebook search to search for Boston restaurants that your friends like or pictures of your friends before 2016. So visual search and the visual web, although search engines were origi originally designed to search text documents, the explosion of photos and videos on the internet created a demand for searching and classifying these visual objects. Facial recognition software can create a digital version of a human face. Facebook has a tag suggest function to assist users in tagging their friends in photos. You can also search for people on Facebook by using their digital image to find and identify them. Facebook is now using artificial intelligence technologies to make its facial recognition capabilities more accurate. Searching photos, image, and videos has become increasingly important as the web becomes more visual. The visual web refers to websites such as Pinterest, where pictures replace text documents, where users search pictures, and where pictures of products replace dis display ads for, for products. Pinterest is a social networking site that provides users as well as brands with an online board to which they can pin interesting pictures. Pinterest had 200 million active monthly users worldwide in 2018. Instagram is another example of the visual web. Instagram is a photo and video sharing site 
that allows users to take pictures, enhance them, and share them with friends on other social sites such as Facebook and Twitter. In 2018, Instagram had 800 million monthly active users. So shopping boots. Shopping boots use intelligent agent software for searching the internet for shopping information. Search engine marketing search engines have become major advertising, advertising platform and shopping tools by offering what is now called search engine marketing. Because search engine marketing is so effective, it has the highest click through rate and the highest return on ad investment. Company seeks to optimize the websites for search engines recognition. The better optimize the page is the higher a ranking it will achieve in search and search engine results listings so sharing information on the web so today websites don't contain statistic content they enable people to collaborate share information and create new services and content online today's web can support interactively a real-time user control, social participation or sharing, and user-generated user content. The technologies and services beh behind these features include cloud computing, software mashups and apps, blogs, RSS, wikis, and social networks. So a blog, the popular term for web blogs, is a personal website that uh, typically contains a series of chronological entries by its author and links to related web pages. Most blogs allow um, readers to post comments on the blog entry as well. The act of creating a blog is often referred to as blogging. Blogs allows visitors to add comments to the or original content, but they do not allow visitors to change the original posted material. Social networking sites enable user are users to build communities of friends and professional colleagues. Members uh, typically create a profile, a web page for posting photos, videos, um, audio files, and text, and then share these profiles with others on the service identified as their friends or contacts. Social networking sites are highly interactive, offer real-time user control, rely on user-generated content, and are broadly based on social participation and sharing of contents and opinions. Leading social networking sites include Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Social networking has radically changed how people spend their time online, how people communicate and with whom, how business people stay in touch with customers, suppliers, and employees. and how providers of goods and services learned about their customers and how advertisers reach potential customers. So the large social networking sites are also ap application development platforms where members can create and sell software applications to another members of the community. Facebook alone has more than 7 million apps and websites integrated with it, including applications for gaming, video sharing and communicating with friends and families. The future of web. The future internet is becoming visible and its key features are more tools for individuals to make sense out of the trillions of pages on the internet or the millions of apps available for smartphones and a visual, even three-dimensional web where you can walk through pages in a 3D environment. Even Closer in Time is a pervasive web that controls everything from a city's traffic lights and water usage to the lights in your living room to your car's rearview mirror, not to mention managing your calendar and appointments. This is uh, referred to as the Internet of Things. And based on the billion of Internet connected sensors throughout our physical world, so Internet of Things. The Internet of Things describes physical objects with sensors, processing ability software, and other th technologies that connect and exchange data with other devices and systems over the Internet or other communication networks. So what are the principal te technologies and standards 
for wireless networking, communication, and internet access. So welcome to the wireless revolution. Cell phones, smartphones, tablets, and wireless enabled personal computers have morphed into portable media and computing platforms that let you perform many of the computing tasks you used to do at your desk and a whole lot more. So smartphones such as the iPhone and Android phones combine the functionality of a cell phone with that of a mobile laptop computer with Wi-Fi capability. So this makes it possible to combine music, video, internet access, and telephone service in one device. A large part of the internet is becoming a mobile access anywhere broadband service for the delivery of video, music, and web search. C cellular system. So earlier uh, generations of cellular systems were designed primarily for voice and limited data transmissions in the form of short text messages. Today, wireless carriers offers 3G and 4G networks. So the 3G networks with um, transmission speed ranging from 144 kbps for mobile users to more than 2 mbps for stationary users um, offer transmission speeds appropriate for email and web browsing but are too slow for for videos 4g networks have much higher speeds up to 100 mbps downloads and 50 mbps upload with more than enough capacity for watching high-definition video on your smartphone. Long-term evolution or LTE and mobile worldwide interoperability for microwave access are the current 4G standards. So the next generation of wireless technology called 5G is still under development. 5G will support transmission of huge amounts of data in the gigabit range with fewer transmission delays and the ability to connect many more devices such as sensors and smart devices at once that existing cellular systems. 5G technology will be needed for self-driving vehicles, smart cities, and extensive use of the Internet of Things. So wireless computer networks and Internet access. An array of technologies provides high-speed wireless access to the internet for PCs and mobile devices. These new high-speed services have extended internet access to numerous locations that could not be covered by traditional wired internet service and have made ubiquitous com computing or anywhere, anytime and a reality. So Bluetooth is the popular name for 802.15 wireless networking standard which is useful for creating small personal area network or PANs. It links up to eight devices within a 10 meter area using low power radio based communication and can transmit up to 722 kbps in the 2.4 gigahertz band. Wireless phones, pagers, computers, printers, and computing device, uh, devices using Bluetooth communicate with each other and even operates each other without direct user intervention. For example, a person could direct a notebook computer to send a document file wirelessly to a printer. Bluetooth connects wireless keyboards and mice to PCs or cell phones to earpiece without wires. Bluetooth has low power requirements, making it appropriate for battery-powered handled computers or cell phones. Bluetooth enable a variety of devices, including cell phones, smartphones, wireless keyboards, and mice, PCs, and printers to interact wirelessly with each other within a small 30-foot or 10-meter area. In addition to the links shown, Bluetooth can be used to network similar devices to send data from one, from one PC to another for, from another. Wi-Fi and wireless internet access, also known as Wi-Fi. The first of these standards to be widely adopted was 802.11b, which can transmit up to 11 Mbps in the unlicensed 2.4 GHz band and has an effective distance of 30 to 50 meters. The 802.11g standard can transmit up to 54 Mbps in the 2.4 GHz range. 802.11n is capable of transmitting over 100 Mbps. Today's PCs and tablets have built-in support for Wi-Fi, 
as do the iPhones, iPads, and other smartphones. The most popular use for Wi-Fi today is, the, is for high-speed wireless internet service. In this instance, the access point plugs into an internet connection which could come from a cable service or DSL telephone service. Computers within range of the access point use, use it to link wirelessly to the internet. Hotspots are locations with one or more access points providing wireless internet access and, and are often in public places. Some hot, hotspots are free or do not require any additional software to use. Other may require activation and the establishment of a user account by providing a credit card number over the web. WiMAX. Um, surprisingly large number of areas in the US and throughout the world do not have access to Wi-Fi or fixed broadband connectivity. So the range of Wi-Fi systems is, is no more than 300 feet from the base station, making it difficult for rural areas and groups that don't have cable or DSL service to find wireless access to the internet. So the Institute of Electrical and Ele Electronics Engineers developed a, a family of standard known as WiMAX to deal with these problems. WiMAX, which stands for wi Worldwide Interoperability for Microwave Access is the popular term for IEEE Standard 802.16. It has a wireless access range of up to 31 miles and transmission speed of 30 to 40 Mbps and up to 1 gigabit per second for fixed stations. So WiMAX antennas are powerful enough to beam high-speed internet connections to rooftop antennas or of homes and businesses that are miles away and businesses that are miles away. Cellular handsets and laptops with WiMAX capabilities are appearing in the marketplace. So RFID and wireless sensor network. So mobile technologies are creating new efficiencies and ways of working throughout the enterprise. In addition to the wireless systems, we have just described radio frequency identification systems and wireless sensors networks are having a major impact. So radio frequency identification or RFID systems provides a powerful technology for tracking the movement of goods throughout the supply chain. RFID uses low powered radio transmitters to read data stored in a tag at distances ranging from one inch to 100 feet. The reader captures the data from the tag and send them over a network to a host computer for processing. So near field communication or NFC is a short-range wireless connectivity standard that uses ele uh, electromagnetic radio fields um, to enable two compatible devices to exchange data when bought within a few centimeters of each other. A smartphone or other NFC compatible device sends out radio frequency signals that interact with an NFC tag found in compatible card readers or smart posters. The signal creates a current that flows through the NFC tag, allowing the device and the tag to communicate with one another. In most cases, the tag is passive and only sent out information while the other devices, such as a smartphone, is active and can both send another received information. There are NFC systems where both components are active. NFC is used in wireless payment services to retrieve information, and even to exchange videos or, of, or information with friends on the go. You could share a website link by passing your phone over a friend's phone while waving your phone in front of a poster or display containing an NFC tag could show information about what you're viewing at a museum or exhibit. So wireless sensor networks. If your company wanted state-of-an-art technology to monitor building security or detect hazardous substances in the air, it might deploy a wireless sensor network. Wireless sensor networks, or WSNs, are networks of interconnected wireless devices that are embedded in the physical environment to provide measurements of many points over large space. These devices have built-in processing, storage, and radio frequency sensors and antennas. They are linked into an interconnected network that routes the data they capture to a computer for analysis, and these networks range from hundreds to thousands of nodes. And uh, that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching.